Glastonbury Tor in Somerset is a vastly ancient site. Archaeologists have discovered flint tools from as far back as the Neolithic. With this in mind, it would be fair to say, if it were able, it would have borne witness to many significant events, changing beliefs and, as we shall see, some episodes of genuine horror. At one point, it is likely the Tor would have appeared as an island rising above the surrounding landscape and Avalon Marshes, a name which has mythical associations with the interlinked legends of the Holy Grail and King Arthur. There is some evidence to suggest there may have been a Romano-British temple at the top of the Tor, which would also place it in the mythical Arthur period. It is likely that, in the Iron Age, the site was used as a temporary defensive hill fort, but was not a permanent settlement. Archaeological finds suggest that during the twilight of Saxon England, and shortly after the Norman Conquest, there were at least four buildings at the summit. The base of a stone cross demonstrates Christian use of the site during this period, and it may have served as a hermitage. The first church at the site was a timber structure believed to have been constructed in the 11th or 12th century and was discovered via telltale post holes. The church was dedicated to St Michael. It was destroyed in a powerful earthquake on the 11th of September 1275 from which experts believe tremors could have been felt as far away as London, Canterbury and Wales. The timber edifice was replaced by the new St Michael's church which was made of sandstone in the 14th century but it too would come to grief in the form of the anthropomorphised natural disaster that was Henry VIII and his policy of cultural vandalism and looting, known as the dissolution of the monasteries. Henry was a polarising figure and undoubted tyrant, but it could be argued that his violent break with Rome is what helped to forge a true nation of England. However, there is no doubting that he was very much bad news from the point of view of ecclesiastical architecture, both in Glastonbury and beyond. In 1539, all but the Tower of St Michael's was torn down. Thankfully, it remains to this day a skeletal roofless shell, a revenant remnant of an extinguished way of life, and demolition would not be the end of the horror. The Tor was the site of the brutal execution of Richard Whiting, the last abbot of Glastonbury Abbey, along with two of his brother monks, John Thorne and Roger James. They were dragged to the top of the Tor and hanged, drawn and quartered after charges of looting the Abbey when the King's men failed to discover fabulous treasures they had hoped for as they ransacked the now ruined Abbey. Whiting was also accused of treason and convicted without trial by Thomas Cromwell, who was Henry VIII's political and religious fixer. After the grisly deaths, Whiting's head was fastened over the west gate of the abbey and his limbs were displayed at Wells, Bath, Ilchester and Bridgewater. Away from established, provable history, the site is home to a swirling panoply of myths and legends, with local folklore holding that the Tor could be the mythical Isle of Avalon. The Tor seems to have once been called Yinis Yer Avalon, meaning the Isle of Avalon by the Britons, and the 12th and 13th century chronicler Gerald of Wales believed it was the Avalon referred to in Arthurian legend. The area has been associated with Arthurian mythology ever since the alleged discovery of two coffins labelled as belonging to Arthur and his queen, Guinevere, in 1191. Some see this convenient find as being part of a ruse to cash in on the pilgrimage boom that was taking place in England. Glastonbury's churchmen would certainly have been tempted by that deadly sin, envy, after witnessing the growth of the pilgrimage industry in Canterbury following the murder of the Archbishop Thomas Becket in 1170. Just over two decades later did they hit upon a money-spinning idea of their own by claiming to possess the remains of the mythical once and future king. But I'm not here to shatter myths, especially fun ones, and Arthur represents far more than earthly remains. The legend provides a link to a distant past and Glastonbury Tor offers plenty in that respect. The Tor has been associated with gods and goddesses of Celtic and its precursor Indo-European mythology. One of these deities is Gwyn ap Nuth, the first lord of the other world and king of the fairies, and the Tor was believed to be a gateway to the land of the dead. Gwyn ap Nuth is also strongly associated with the wider legend of the Wild Hunt, which also features in Germanic and Norse mythology, with either Thor or Odin at the head of a sky-bound hunting party, and notably in Windsor in the legend of Hearn the Hunter, a spectral deer-headed entity who is said to haunt Windsor Great Park.
Hearn the Hunter, who first appears in print in Shakespeare's The Merry Wives of Windsor, can possibly be seen as a continuation of the Celtic god Kernanos and or the notion of the Green Man or Green Knight of Arthurian legend. St Michael's Tower has a curious female character etched on its walls that could also hark back to a pagan Celtic past. It is thought that the sculpted figure is St Brigid milking a cow. Possibly you hemorrhized the process by which characters are transferred from a god to a real person to incorporate them into Christian belief. St Brigid is thought to be represented in the relief on the exterior wall of St Michael's Tower. She, if it is indeed her, is seen milking a cow. There is some debate over whether St Brigid was actually a real person. She has the same name and many of the same attributes as the Celtic goddess Brigid. In common with the saint, the original Celtic deity is associated with poetry, healing, smithing, protection and animal husbandry. A previous Hidden History video focuses on the nearby Chalice Well and its alleged links to the Holy Grail, link in the description. Some historians believe the striking and most likely natural but modified feature of the tour inspired the construction of Silbury Hill in Wiltshire, which is the largest artificial mound in Europe. A future video will examine Silbury Hill and the macabre past of the nearby West Kennet Long Barrow. But for now, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share and most importantly subscribe.